So I've got here. This is the X100S. Welcome back my little subscribers. It's been a long time since I've made a camera related video, but that's because I've been so busy making some music. Uh, but this time I wanted to change it up a little bit. Um, you know, I do photography and videography on the side when I'm not playing music or my other job. So I wanted to share a little bit about my adventure or journey testing out new cameras. And I'm, my goal is trying to find something portable and travel friendly that you can always carry with you that's not so bulky, um, not what you would need for a wedding or an event. Huge lenses, bigger bodies, you know what I mean. So in my search for that, I've looked at RX100s, RX10s, um, Fuji's now, and so I want to share my thoughts on the Fuji X100. And I didn't get the newest one, I got an older one because again, it's a backup camera, it's not a main camera, so I got the S, which is from 2013. <laughs> I had no idea it was that old um, until I actually got it and started playing with it and it's definitely uh, different technology than what we have today. So I want to show you what I have and my quick thoughts on having it for a couple of days um, and why I'm not keeping it. So I've got here, this is the X100S and I didn't get the newer one which is the F because I didn't want to spend a grand on something that I'm not going to use as much this is more to be like a backup pocket camera and so you know what first first impressions I really like the body I've never used one of these and it it was a learning curve for me because I'm used to Sony and Canon cameras but looking at the button layout uh, I actually got pretty comfy with this camera. I, I don't have complaints about um, managing going through menu systems or settings. My complaints start with more of the usability. I think I've been spoiled with the technology. But just so you can see, uh, this is really neat. It has a unique viewfinder, which is both optical and electronic. You can switch with that lever that's in the front. Um, I really like that it has the focus modes continuous single and manual on the top we've got shutter speed and compensation and one little spinner here for different functions on the back this is not a touchscreen this is from 2013 so you can't expect a touchscreen out of this one but even then I didn't feel limited moving my my focus point um, I had to look at the manual because there's a couple of functions I didn't know how to use but after sitting with it for like five minutes, I got the settings where I wanted them and I was shooting right away. And this is super cool. I mean, I would recommend this for a beginner that wants high quality because this is an APS-C sensor with a 35 millimeter F2 equivalent. And it's great. The image quality is really nice. I think the only reason I'm not keeping it is because after testing it today in bright sunlight, I found out that there's a limitation to it when it comes to shutter speed. Looks like um, when you when you're at f2, you're limited to shoot at a thousand of a second, and I was in bright sunlight, so I was uh, kind of struggling. I was like, it goes up to four thousand, but it looks like there's a limit in the way this camera was made that doesn't enable you to do that until you get to f4, f5.6, f8 then your shutter speed can go a little higher but I was really disappointed I was <laughs> taking pictures in broad say, uh, sunlight and I know this camera can do it but it wouldn't go past a thousand let me give you a rundown of the, the downsides to this camera um, the first one is ISO 100 is locked, unless you shoot JPEG. And if you're like me, who's a professional or an enthusiast who shoots only raw, 
you, you kind of need the ISO 100 to justify um, bright light situations and broad daylight that needs you to lower down your exposure and which links to my other issue or other downside is that your shutter speed is limited by the aperture you're at so you want to obviously enjoy the f2 right so you can get the most out of the blur and uh, isolation of your subject however at f2 you're limited at one thousand of a second iso 200 in raw put into account that nd filter which is three stops it's still overexposed i would have liked to see that nd filter be a little bit stronger with more stops it is what it is it's an old camera another downside is that fuji is really well known for their film simulations because they look awesome and i love them however this older camera does not have the 15 or 16 that are out now so you're kind of limited to the the original ones that they released with their first cameras uh, which are still good but again you're not going to get like classic chrome acro all those um unique ones that you probably have heard about fuji finally there's no touch screen this may be a downside for some people more than others for me it wasn't a downside i'm used to using the old like canon functions and joysticks and using the d-pad or whatever that wasn't a problem for me but I, for some people a touchscreen may be an issue because it, it does slow you down a little bit so overall it's a great camera i don't want to say it's a bad camera but there are limitations that you need to keep in mind and if you're someone like me who's just looking for something uh, a little bit more advanced uh, similar to what i usually use in the professional realm uh, this camera just didn't cut it for me but if you're a beginner or you are gifting a camera to somebody um, who wants to really learn more about photography this is a great option great image quality and it's something you will grow out of or you just love that classic look and you just you deal with the limitations but that's not where i'm at so i can't 100 percent recommend it thanks for watching